Hi everyone. In the last video, we talked about the core principles of Spring Dependency Injection DI and Inversion of Control IOC. In this video, we will discuss the Spring's implementation of IOC known as IOC Container. It is the job of IOC Container to scan the project, to identify the objects, to understand the dependencies between them, to create the objects and wire them together. So this is all done by the IOC container. Now consider given a Java project, how does the IOC container know which classes it needs to instantiate? And how does it know that these classes are interrelated? How does it understand the dependency so that it can wire them? So let's see how does it work. In a Spring application, we have the project which contains the Java source code. So we have the Java source code. Then we provide some configuration metadata to Spring so that it can understand the classes, their dependencies in order to create new objects of those classes and wire them together. So we provide the configuration metadata to Spring. Now, how do we provide or how do we write this configuration metadata? There are three ways. The first way is to use the files or the XML files. So we can write some configuration in XMLs that will define the classes, the dependencies of those classes. All right. The second option is to use the annotations. We can use the annotations on the classes itself to define the dependencies that will give a, a hint to Spring IOC container how to create a new object of that class. The third option is Java based, which is uh, similar to annotation but it has its own annotations and a slightly different way to define the configuration. We will see the example of all three ways uh, in the upcoming videos. So we provide some configuration metadata to Spring Container along with the Java source code. Alright. Now Spring Container has the source code and the metadata so it knows how to create new objects of classes and how to wire the dependencies. So we get the fully configured system out of that. Now Spring Container which is also called as IOC Container. In Spring there are two core interfaces which represent the IOC Container. The first one is Bean Factory. And the second one is application context. Now Bean Factory is the core interface which represents the IOC container. It provides or defines the basic features of IOC container. Application context is a sub interface of Bean Factory, but it is a superset of Bean Factory. So when, whenever we need to use the IOC container, whenever we are working with Spring project, we mainly use application context because it has everything that is there in the bean factory and then it provides something else, something extra. So for example, uh, if we are dealing with resources, let's say files, property files, resource handling that is supported by application context. Also, when the application is starting up, Spring creates its own context, which is known as Spring Context, which has the information about the classes, their dependencies. And when there is a change in the context, let's say the context is starting up or going down, it publishes some events that we can listen to so that we can act upon it. So event support is there in the application context only, not in the Bean Factory. Spring AOP is another feature which is supported in the application context. So we don't use Bean Factory directly, but we use application context, which is the superset of Bean Factory interface. Okay, so we talked about the configuration metadata, how to provide configuration metadata, and then we talked about the Spring implementation of the IOC container, which is Bean Factory and application context. Now let's see how to initialize the Spring IOC container or Spring context in an application not going to see the code as of now but just the theory part of it
So let's say in the Java project, we have a main application here. In the main application, what we used to do, we used to create uh, the new object of the entry point or the class that acts as the entry point. So we create a new object of that class we call a method which starts the execution of the whole project. But when we are using Spring, what we do, we initialize the context, we initialize the IOC container, the Spring IOC container. And we just talked about that there are two interfaces, Bean Factory and Application Context. So here we are using Application Context line number one. So we are initializing, creating a new object of Application Context. And there are three implementations of Application Context based on the configuration metadata. So if we are using XML, then we use class path XML application context. We provide the path and name of the XML file, all right, that has that configuration metadata. So based on this XML file, the configuration that we have provided in the XML file, the class path XML application context, which is an implementation of this interface application context, it will create a spring context for that application. Now, once the application context is initialized, in order to get a new object of a class, instead of us calling the new and the constructor name or explicitly creating the new object, what we do, we ask the spring container or the IOC container to provide a new object of a class. So line number two, what is happening? Let's say we need a new object of class A. So instead of saying new class A, we are asking the Spring IOC container or application context that we want a new object of class A. This is the ID of that bean and we will uh, talk about what is this ID and what is this bean. But there is a method in the application context get bean that is used to get or retrieve a new object of a class. So that's what we are doing. We are asking Spring container, IOC container to provide a new object of class A. And once we have the new object, we can do anything. So here line number three is showing that we are calling do something method on that object. Now there are different implementations of application context that we will cover in upcoming videos. This is just an example to show how to work with, let's say XML files, the configuration metadata. When we use annotations, there is a different implementation. When we use, let's say, Java based configuration, there will be a different implementation of application context. So, in this video, we talked about what is Spring IOC container, how does it, how do we provide information, the required information to IOC container, then how do we initialize the IOC container in an application in order to work with objects and classes and their dependencies. In the next video, we will talk about beans. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.